Uh, welcome to the State of Curl 2022. I am Daniel, of course. Uh, let's get into this. I, this is going to be a fairly packed uh, session about Curl, the project, what we did, what we're doing, what we're going to do. So I'm going to try to get into uh, project details, growth and size and quality commits, newcomers who's still here, our releases, activity in the project, vulnerability security stuff. I will have a separate session about uh, security and stuff, but uh, I'll get into some details here. A little bit of uh, some, something from the users, money in the project, something we've done. Uh, well, um, I will highlight stuff we did the last year. And actually, I'll mention it again later, but this is mostly for the last 12 months. That I'm actually trying to do it from you know, June to June here. So we had this curl up uh, delayed. So I'm actually talking a lot of details in this presentation about this date three months ago in, in the June, not in September when I'm recording this. A little bit of a crazy situation, but anyway. And then something about what's still uh, maybe not ideal or less good in the project and something uh, about my role and who knows what's going to come in the future. Well, some plans, ideas, roadmaps. So 2022, the growth and size of the project curl. We are now at 145k lines of code and we're still climbing, it says here. There's actually no change since last year in a number of lines of code because we did, we did a large removal over the year. So um, there was this huge bump in the graph. If you're looking at it up at the uh, right uh, corner, you can see the bump there um, that clearly we we reduced something and then started uh, or continued to add so we're basically back up to where we were a year ago we are still uh, have the same amount of transfer protocols a bunch of them um, well i'm in the way just now for some of the graphs here but it doesn't matter just to see 26 different transfer protocols when we uh, use them or sort of split them out by transfer scheme or URL scheme. We have uh, actually the same amount of third party dependencies as last year, which is minus one plus one. And it looks like this. Um, so if you look up in the right corner where the changes have happened, uh, we removed MesaLink support. MesaLink, which is, was a TLS library. It's actually a um, uh, TLS library written in Rust with an OpenSSL API, but we dropped support for it because it's uh, stopped being developed. And we added support for MSH3, which is a H, well, HTTP3 library for Windows built on top of MS Quick, also on Windows. Uh, actually, you can build it on other platforms than Windows too. I'm sort of, uh, yeah. So we're, we're keeping up uh, the pace with support for third party libraries. So the total, um, you know, the messy map of um, third-party dependencies in, it says here, June 2022, it actually still looks the same in, in September. But uh, yeah, the green ones are then third-party uh, libraries that we can use when we build curl. <coughs> Quite a lot of them. Uh, let's move on. We, we still have uh, 86 different um, operating systems mentioned that has, has been used or sort of curl has run, run once on these one. Um, this is not a very scientific approach to me collecting these so they don't actually move very much because uh, it takes a lot of work and me asking a lot of people questions to to get new ones so maybe this will just stick like this for a while and the same goes with cpu architectures it's the same 22 as last year but the new cpr cpu architecture don't really pop up that often. So I don't expect this to change much going further either, at least not very often. And we're still on two planets exactly as we were last year. Of course, Curl was used in the helicopter landing mission on Mars. So yes, um, okay, we dropped a TLS uh, backend this year. I told you already, the MesaLink one. And looking at other Curl backends, uh, I nowadays make this crazy uh, graph. It's available on, in the curl dashboard. It shows the number of 
uh, backends for different things over time. Uh, so yes, uh, the top one is of course the number of TLS backends, and then there are other backends. <coughs> uh, well, you know, I, I like graphs. This is a, a messy one, but yeah, maybe it shows something. We still continue to do um, add command line options. We added six more this year, so we are up to 248 command line options. Of course, most of the ones we add these days are niche features, so maybe not too many users are using all those new ones. <clears throat> the growth continues fairly steadily to go, you know, it's a very, very linear growth on, on this graph here. And similarly then, the new uh, command line options were added pretty much because we added curly setup options seven uh, since the last year. We've actually added a few more since I wrote this slide, so I think we're up to a few more. And there uh, is going to be a few more uh, soon too, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to that. So yes, that's a steady growth as well. We started out in the, you, you see in the left from, we had 60 something maybe, when we started and we're up at 300 very soon. Going forward then, um, quality and testing in the curl project where, where we are now. So we have the, um, well, all the product code is written in C, right? It's very efficient, it's very portable. That's why we can reach all those 86 operating systems on, on uh, 22 CPU architectures. but. Of course, some security problems could be avoided if we had used another language, like maybe something that would is more memory safe. But then we would also uh, miss out a lot of the reach and we would seriously cut off uh, a huge portion of all those operating systems we support now. But we do, of course, our mitigations and to try to reduce the, what should I call it, the price for using C is writing readable code, folding the code, code standards. We do reviews, test fuzzing, static code analyzing, and we do this all the time um, as much as possible. And we do the occasional, you know, code reviews and audits as well. And uh, of course, we are part of the OSS fuzz since uh, I, th I think we celebrated five years recently. Uh, it has really flatlined recently, so nothing new is reported. I don't think that's really because of, well, it is partly because of curl. We fixed a lot of stupid things that we actually got reported initially, but nowadays it's mostly because of uh, limitations in our fuzzing um, integration that we, there, there's room for improvement there. So if we would f improve the fuzzing integration, we would probably get more uh, issues reported from OSS fuzz. And we do a little bit of uh, OSS fuzz on every PR and commit these days with the CI fuzz system, which runs a, a little bit of OSS fuzz for, I think, 40 minutes on every commit and PR, be, sort of as part of the CI setup, which is uh, it's, it's a really good way to detect initial s really stupid things. It, it triggers something every now and then and sort of alerts us that we did something uh, wrong. So yes, we need more entry points and new, um, well, I'm not the expert here, but, but there's certainly room for improvements. Over the year, we have, as you can see here, we added 85 new test cases, which I think is pretty good. After 24 years, we're still growing with 5.9% uh, number of test cases. Uh, test cases, of course, is what makes curl remain solid and stable when we iterate and uh, um, evolve forward. So mm, a pretty much a linear growth there as well. And uh, uh, yes, as you can see how we, in, this actually measures the current way of storing test cases. So it's uh, 20, 2001, it started to grow. We actually had test cases before that too, but it used a different system. So I, the counter only counts the new system, new. <coughs> So I, yeah, that's, I think it's good. I think it's, uh, it's a very good development. And we do document all the bug fixes in the project, you know, very uh, detailed. And we landed 1,024 bug fixes since last year, 
which is increased on the total amount by 15%. So I think 15% bug fixes after 24 years is also good. So you can see here that we have a fairly high bug fix rate these days. That's the, the pink one, which has, a, has its uh, y-axis on the right side that bugs fixes per day. So we're up uh, touching three bug fixes landed per day on average. And the blue one is the total amount of bug fixes over time. So you can see that we're suddenly at some point after 2015, 16, something we really accelerated how uh, the pace, I mean, they changed the, the, the slope of the, of the graph quite seriously, significantly. And that is good too. We do, the, you can clearly see that we have a lot of activity and uh, we do things in the project that makes it better. Well, you can of course then uh, argue that we're obviously inserting bugs also at, at the pretty uh, pretty much at the same rate i guess because not all of the bugs can be very old but anyway we are still uh, developing curl uh, quite a lot so we also then <coughs> as part of uh, increasing um, the number of tests we also increase the number of ci jobs that run these tests or or variations of the tests on different platforms and different build combinations and so on so we've uh, added 13 new ones so yes we're up at on 107 when i wrote this slide i think we have a few more now which of course they are they are certainly significantly help us uh, land good code instead of uh, less good code once we merge them into the master so yes, the, here's the total number of CI jobs. We have uh, really uh, bumped that number to this amount over the last, as you can see, like three years, three, four years since we st uh, the CI usage in the project has really taken off. And we are, most of the jobs run on Linux. And uh, well, you can see we have a fair amount of uh, Windows and Mac OS ones too, and, and a few on FreeBSD. We do have occasional ones running on Solaris, but it's not visible in this because it's not run as uh, as one of the uh, these. It's done a little bit se uh, separately. <clears throat> and of course, uh, w one interesting graph is that during this year, well, as you can see, if you look at this graph, this is uh, it's a bit of a messy graph, but maybe that's also why it's interesting. If you look from starting from the left, you can see the original C, Travis CI usage that started in 2013. And we, for a long time, Travis CI was the only one that we were using, the only um, CI system. And it then in 2021, we dropped it completely because there, uh, the change of policy so we couldn't use it for free anymore and it was quite expensive and we decided that we would rather switch to other free services so therefore the the red uh, plot there just drops in 2021 down to zero again and other services appear in the graph and has then taken off as the new sort of backbone in our uh, ci setup <coughs> We still uh, keep using these six different ones. We're actually now trying to get off the Zool one as well. So the Zool one started out really high too, and is also now shrinking. And we, w I think we want to get off the Zool because it doesn't really work as we want it to work. So commits frequency and who's doing the job <coughs> over the last year. So I continue to do a fair share of the total number of commits. Um, this graph shows, uh, well, the gray bars are my, the percentage of commits in a month that is done by me. Uh, so you can see it's, it's recently it's been uh, around 50%, maybe a little bit more sometimes, a little bit less sometimes. And uh, the, the total average then over time is somewhere on 54%, I think. <clears throat> it seems to be have, as you can see, the, the, gr the green line there, share of commit count, it seems to have flatlined a little bit. So this is, this has been the, the limit, or no, not the limit, the share of commits that I, I have done over 
time recently, over the recent three, five years, something. And the number of commits per month seems to also be fairly stable. Maybe if we look at the, re the red, the pinkish line here, we can see that it is um, maybe going over the all-time average a little bit recently. So maybe we're slowly increasing uh, the average over time uh, recently. But it's that the blue line is the all-time average. And you, as you can see, it's uh, remarkably stable. We're at a little bit over 100 commits per month on average uh, since a very long time. And as you can see, the, the, the thinner blue line, on, that's the monthly commit uh, rate. And it goes up and down quite a lot. So. Uh, some months we're uh, approaching, we're over 200, some months we've been below 50. Well, not that many months, but anyway, it goes up and down, but the average seems to remain at about 100 commits per month. And commits per year, uh, similarly, very stable. Let's ignore the 2022 one, because that's just, you know, that's half a year or not even that, I think, in this graph, maybe. so. <clears throat> All the other years, you can see that we're we're somewhere around, well, recent years, slightly below 1,500, 1,300, 1,500, something. So the five-year average, yeah, also fairly stable. We're, we're maintaining a commit pace, I would say, that we have established for a long time. And number of commit authors uh, is growing or it has been growing at least for, for, for a while, as you can see, maybe 2018, 2019, 2020, as you can see that we actually shrank a little bit and then we bounced back up again hugely in 2021. So who knows? Maybe we're, we, I think we're, all, we're going to land in that ballpark in 2022 as well. Quite a lot of people are providing commits um, and helping out. Most of them, as you can see in the darker green on this uh, image here, they are a first time commit authors. So we have a fairly high pace of incoming first commi first time committers. And a lot of those first time committers are, <laughs> they never become second time committers. I'll show you another graph about that in, in a second. Anyway, then if we count people who have committed 10 or more times within the same calendar year, uh, we reached 15 persons last year, which was a new record um, in the project. So, and I would say, uh, you know, 10 commits, Justin, that's an arbitrary number, but I, I, this, I, I went with 10 because it seems like if you have done 10 commits, it should show some kind of, maybe not commitment, but uh, you know, something resembling commitment or, or uh, interest or something more than just, you know, I did my single bug fix and ran away. So 15 persons did that last year. It'll be interesting to see where we end up this year. With, uh, as, as you can see then the green graph on top of that, that's the total share of commits those 10 people did in the project. So last year then those 15 people did a little bit more than 80% of the commits. <clears throat> and turning the same numbers around, how many people did we need to get up to 70% of the commits? Well, in 2022, five people. And that's, as you can see in this graph, it's a slowly growing average, of course, that we're more, we're, we're slowly becoming more and more people involved, uh, I think. If you go down to less, like 60% of the commits, yeah, fewer, because uh, as I said earlier, my commit rate is a little bit over 50%. So that, uh, if number two is just doing, well, almost, well, approaching 10%, then we're at, then we're two people doing 60%. So that's roughly what we're seeing here. <clears throat> the top 20 curl commit authors, and again, uh, let me, let me say then that this is, um, the last 12 months. So this is actually June to June, not September as uh, we're here today. So uh, I decided to not update this. I'm not sure it would change uh, drastically because I think, I mean, the top 15 names would still be the same if, if I redid it uh, today. But as you can see, I'm, I'm number one. We have Jay, Daniel Gustafsson, Mark Hershken, Tatsuhiro, uh, Mar uh, Tsuyikawa, his name, Marcel Rad, Matt, Patrick Monorat, 
Mihao Antoniak, Josh Soref, Victor Sakats, Fabian K. Kale Kiel, and, and so forth. You can th see it by yourself. But this is people, at least the top. Yeah, most of these people they have they have committed before. So I don't. Maybe some of one or two of these are first time committers. Most of them are regulars since a very long time. Trusted uh, core people in the project. <coughs> So who is new and who's old and what do we do in the project? So we actually added, so I keep this list in the project, contributors. Contributors are anyone who's reporting a bug, writing a commit, uh, suggesting something that we give credit for in a commit. Um, well, sort of like that. Basically people we give credit and thanks for help. So we added 256 names to the list last year, which I think is amazing. We added the the list size by 10% in just a single year. Uh, over 2600 names now. So, and as you can see, this is slowly getting, uh, it's not quite linear. There's a slow bend here. So it's actually going faster and faster over the uh, last few years. Uh, well, maybe again, pretty m quite a many years, but anyway, I, I think it's amazing. It shows that people are still interested and we have a huge, uh, well, a lot of people are helping out. That is, that's one of the powers of curl, right? So, and then going back to, to counting pure commit authorships, who's actually being credited as, as author of commits in curl. We added 134 new committers uh, over the last year which again added the total amount with 14%. Pretty good. A lot of people are actually interested in pr uh, providing code, not only code, but also improving um, other things. Documentation, of course, we have a lot of commits in documentation. Th that ditch, that's, um, this brings this uh, graph, which is I, I think is interesting because I think the, the, well, the blue one, the top one is the, the total number, all committers, uh, all commit authors over time. I said 1039. It's actually up to I think 1066 the other day, three months later. So we're we've we continue to add a lot of new authors or getting a new a lot of new authors. But the green one is um, possibly also one of the most interesting uh, graphs on this picture here because the, the green one is the single commit authors. So as you can see, out of the 1000 authors over 600 of them only did a single commit and never once again. So somewhere around 60% of all authors only did a single commit. And somewhere around, well, as you can see, almost 400 just did two commits. And well, 600 plus 400, that's like a thousand, right? So there's, there's only, uh, no, sorry, those did two or more, that's why. Uh, that's why it's there, right? So, and if you look then at whoever did 10 or more commits, that number is then not as high as the others. And it's very, uh, not growing very fast down there in the red one at the bottom. <coughs> so, but the number of authors per month is, uh, is uh, gradually increasing. Uh, as we can see in the, the red uh, plot here, the, or is it pink that shows the 12 month average of authors per month that is actually it bumped over 25 at the end of the year last year and it's remained like that on average it's still uh well we're below we've been below 25 for a few months right so it's going maybe it's going down a little bit but somewhere around 20 25 authors per month doing commits i think it's decent and and as you can see it's higher than it's been in the project uh, in the past at least. And we have a fairly good pace of first time commit authors. Of course, otherwise we wouldn't uh, add that number so much that we showed before. So we keep adding, it's very rarely that we actually have fewer than five first time committers in a month. And sometimes as you can see here, we we actually hit over 20 first time committers uh, in one month in 2021. So. I think I, I think what this shows is that we're actually pretty good at attracting new committers, and so we must be doing some things wrong, uh, right in the project so that we actually manage to get their contributions and we manage to merge them and 
yes. I think we have more to do there and make it even better, easier and, and more streamlined, but still, we're not in a bad position at all. We're, we're, we're good. Mm. In general, I think we are good. Releases. So year to year, again, June to June. Uh, sorry, this is not the June to June. This is uh, just um, days between releases, uh, shown as a graph. And you know, the y-axis is days, and the x-axis is time. So, and and the the greenish turquoise thing is uh, all time average between releases, and the red pinkish is um, twelve month average between releases. And as you can see, at the at the on the all time average, we are sort of it has stabilized somewhat. So the all time average is actually slightly over forty days between releases, which I think is that's an average, which uh, eh, you know it doesn't really show what we want but the, the um, you know since we're using uh, as this graph shows actually if you show it if you look at 2014 something we started with our eight week release cycle in 2014 so since 2014 the goal the aim the has been to release curl every 56 days so as you can see there there's a little bit of a uh, straight line on some some months some periods there on 56 and uh, everything that is below 56 well sometimes we just readjust the release cycle right so a week add one or more it's not a big deal but when we have those huge drops you see those really we have one two three four five quite a lot of many drops at least during 2016 2017 something but they have as you can see they have appeared later as well they are I would, uh, panic releases patch releases that we did earlier than planned so they are all signs of something that went wrong that shouldn't have went wrong so that we had to do the follow-up release sooner than we anticipated or wanted and planned so it sort of shows that something was not ideal <coughs> it just shows us uh, all that we are we still have um, improvements to do or, or sort of we still do mistakes that we shouldn't do but i guess we're all human so it's likely to continue and and uh, then just this is just on the y-axis here this is just the number of releases and and the x-axis is the time then so we can just see that if you plot them out over time they look it look like it looks like this I only labeled the f every fifth, I, th I think, every fifth release on, or something like that. That's why the labels on them, you know, you know appear like this. <coughs> so activity in the project. We use um, GitHub, of course. So we uh, people create issues, bugs, file bugs, bug reports, and we do pull requests to do too much changes. I also do most of my changes as pull requests. So it's it's um, more or less, it's every now and then we merge things without pull requests, but um, I would say maybe 95%, maybe more of everything is done as pull requests. So this is, uh, this reflects that. The, so the top line here is the, the that's for pull requests and the, lower line is for issues and I there are those as you can see we have I have added the average uh, number as well because it doesn't really bounce back and forth as much and shows a trend slightly better so yes we have quite a lot of pull requests every month um, and quite a lot of features no sorry issues as well <clears throat> And the trend is uh, well, s maybe slowly growing, mm, stabilizing maybe. We close issues in, in uh, on GitHub fairly quickly. I like the median number, which is the blue one at the bottom, which shows that the medium number, more than half of all uh, issues and pull requests are closed within like a day. On so only the second half is uh, survives. 24 hours pretty much um, average of course then bounce back up and down quite a lot depending on 
uh, where what kind of issues we close. Sometimes we have those uh, bugs, you know, that linger around for a very long time, and when we close them, they appear here. So if we close one that's very old, that one will seriously increase the average for that month. <coughs> and the 70 75th percentile is also, I, I think, pretty good. It's rarely o over 10 days. The y-axis is number of days. So we, over time, we certainly have been improved so that we close them sooner rather than later o over time. And of course, part of this explanation is that we move some issues to known bugs and to do. So we bugs and things that linger around for a long time, nobody seems to work on it, nobody intends to work on it, we close it anyway and move it to known bugs. So Closing does not always necessarily imply that we actually fix the problem. We just move the problem out of the issue tracker because uh, we believe in keeping the issue tracker more of a state of what we work on and what we should do uh, now and in the near future. So I then have this extra script that checks the number of open issues and pull requests over time at the end of day. And the end of day, uh, I'm not sure exactly when at the end of day means here, but it's, uh, it might be UTC or something. It doesn't matter because it's once per day. So it's w once every 24 hours. It doesn't really matter which at, at which time of day, but you know, this just to see how the number of open issues and pull requests on GitHub is kept at a fairly low number in total um, over time. This, again, this is three months ago. We actually had another bump over the summer, but I we've, I think we're back to somewhere around 60, 70 now. So the, as, as an average, we keep it somewhere 50, 60 uh, long term. And I think that's awesome because it's, it's make them easier to keep track of, not get lost among uh, sort of easier to manage. And, you know, we do when we close when we work on issues and pull requests and we merge them into git we use the fixes and the merges keywords in the commit messages to point out which uh, which issue that we fix and which pull request that we merge when we uh, you kind of close the prs with the closest keyword and when we use those keywords i have this script that checks how long did that pr or issue uh, exist in the in GitHub before we committed. And that number is what's shown here. And this is number of hours on the, on the Y axis. So when it comes to fixing things and merging pull requests, we are actually pretty good. As you can see, we're below 20 hours on average. No, sorry, this is a median number. So more than half is below 20 um, for quite a long time, since at least a year uh, back. Um, not sure what it says, but it says that we're, we're, we have we have keen eye on what's happening on GitHub and we react on what, haps, what happens there pretty swiftly. I think it's good. And then, <coughs> as I always say when I show this graph, every year I say this, because this shows the number of mailing lists posts per month on the, diff on the two main curl mailing lists. The, the up graph, the green one, is then the curl library list, and the lower one, the black one, is the curl users list. That it, it shrunk significantly since 2015, and that's exactly when we switched to using GitHub much more. So basically, we replaced a lot of mailing list traffic with GitHub traffic, and that's what, what this shows. <clears throat> so, vulnerabilities uh, this year, uh, or in general, we do um, we get a lot of uh, we have received a lot of, of um, scrutiny and in and attention recently so in 2022 we fixed quite a lot of uh, security vulnerabilities in curl as you can see those are the green ones those that we fixed and the i wonder if this is wrong no it doesn't matter so and the red ones are then uh, bound, bumped when we introduced security problems because we backtrack and check when we actually did the initial bad commit. So we can see that the green ones are fixes, red ones are 
introductions of vulnerabilities. So <clears throat> as we can see then on the on the plots that the green line and the uh, orange line, so the green one is certainly way above the orange line. So we're at least fixing things much faster than we introduced them recently. And I think that is good. Um, we keep getting a lot of attention from security researchers on, on cross security in general. And I think that is awesome. And it makes it, it makes the pro project better. And thanks to that, we actually paid, as you can see, we have now paid uh, this numbers here says 34,660 USD. This is actually now three months later, we actually paid more than 40,000. So, uh, and as you can see, the bump since last year is significant. We've pretty much the, the reward amounts have really taken off in the project. So uh, we have, we pay a lot of rewards for, for security vulnerabilities in curl. And thankfully, uh, also new since last year is actually that we don't pay these bug bounties ourselves. We have a, a great sponsor in the Internet Bug Bounty Project that is actually handling the reward part of our bug bounty system. So we work out all the bug, uh, sort of the security vulnerabilities and the Internet Bug Bounty pays out the rewards. And right now, recently, they have paid, uh, well, $2,400 per medium um, security severity and $480 for the low uh, severity level vulnerabilities. Yeah. And the other show then that is the, the payments have really taken off in the project is that, of course, for a long time, we didn't have any bug, bug bounty at all in the project. So we were zero, 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 zero for, you know, as you can see, for the first 19 years or so well maybe 21 years yeah uh, and then uh, in 2019 we slowly started the our bug bounties uh, and then in 2020 it started to take off and, and as you can see in 20, 2021 it really took off and it has continued a little bit like this since uh, since after this graph was made as well so what do we learn from these vulnerabilities <coughs> um I think we have our mitigations on, on how to do better C ha have had an effect. Um, I'll talk us about this more in a separate presentation, of course. But of course, flaws still linger around in the code a very long uh, time until detected. Since the average time a CV, uh, well, a vulnerable code has been in curl when reported is like still around, uh, well, many, many years. Like I, I think it's around seven or eight on average. Fuzzing is still what makes things better. And a lot of uh, people are using fuzzing themselves when they find flaws too. And fixing the flaws are usually straightforward. The hard work is for someone to actually identify the problem. Uh, why, once it's been identified and uh, agreed to, usually fixing it is relatively easy. And thanks to the internet bug bounty, yes, we have raised the bounty significantly. Uh, and I think by raising the bounties, we have also uh, manage to get even more attention from people because people can actually make real money from finding curl flaws. Continuing the user's view on curl. So we have this annual user survey. So we get to know a little bit from self-selected, of course, we ask people, some people respond and they tell us what do they use, what do they don't use, what they, what's good, what's bad, what stuff like that, you know, what should we do, what shouldn't we do, and what do you think about the curl project in general? It's very tricky, of course, because it's so self-selected uh, crowd. Um, so, and maybe they're telling the truth, maybe they're not, what are they using? So I, when I did this uh, slide, I um, I wrote this, so it's not run just uh, it's just ran not analyzed yet because that's what's the truth in in the early June. But I then did my analyze, but I haven't updated this slide yet. So um, pretty much what the, what the user survey 2022 says is that we users perceive curl the same way as they have done for a very long time. Very very little news in the area of. Um, Pretty much what the annual user survey keeps showing that things in the project remain very similar to users because 
we, one of the questions uh, among the in the survey is also did you answer this survey last year and very few people actually um, most people actually didn't uh, fill in the survey last year which is interesting right so every year 75 percent didn't answer last year so it's usually a fairly big turnaround among among respondents to, to this survey but still the survey results are strikingly similar year to year uh, which i don't know exactly how to interpret but i could say that it gives more credit to to, to what they show so uh, it doesn't really matter who's answering but they seem to be but Anyway, sorry, I should just stick on this for a second. Uh, go read the analysis of the user survey if you want to learn. Uh, and I think what's perhaps most interesting in, in, in the survey is sometimes what protocols are people using, what TLS backends are people using, uh, you know, stuff like that. Some of the write-ins are sometimes interesting, but it's hard. It's hard to... And I, it really, I could use your help to an, analyze and sort of interpret the results because I, I'm not sure I always do the best job there. Help me. So the curl, uh, curl SC web traffic in June 2022, and this is interesting. And I think we're seeing a lot of anal um, anomalies um, in this uh, uh, data, but I'll, I'll show you the data first. So Fastly, that's the big logo here. Uh, quite messy on top of the curl logo yeah. um, <coughs> so we they host our website or they actually run the CDN so they take pretty much all the load off this and it makes it fast and, and the easy access for people all over the world and um, they serve served actually 278 terabytes of curl website the last 12 months and as you can see that's up from 146 the 46 the year before, pre almost a double of, of the data amounts, 278 terabyte, quite a lot of data. And what's what? Then people ask me, what what are what are everyone doing on the site so that spends that much data? And the truth is, I have no idea because we don't log, we don't trace, we don't track. We I don't know, but what we do know is that we provide uh, curl packages for download and those are the pretty much the only big data chunks that you can get uh, from the site so i would say there's a lot of downloads of curl we have <coughs> we also then but what well, this shows this shows the more um peculiar thing that we went up we we an order of magnitude more requests per day on average so we doubled the bandwidth, but we got 10 times the number of requests, which is, which suggests that they did not at all download, they, all of them did not download the curl download, because then this wouldn't look like this. So I actually pretty sure that uh, some of this uh, data is some kind of bot somewhere that's doing automated things on the curl site. And I think actually that the request rate has shrunk quite a lot recently so therefore i all of this this data you should i mean this this is real data but i don't think uh, all of it is is driven by actual users there are some some bot automatic stuff going on here so um take take this with uh, just that knowledge that maybe we should just ignore those numbers still i mean the website is still uh, getting quite a lot of traffic, quite a lot of downloads, and um, that's fun. <coughs> and and thank you, Fastly. They really make uh, our lives much much easier. The the managing the website is now uh, very convenient. It's more. It's, it's uh, this is the way we want uh, website administration to, to be done, really, because. Uh, fastly offloads all the hard work and just serves it very easily so i do this fun google trends search every year which and then i use uh, two other well <coughs> from my point of view similar projects wget and OpenSSL, and i see google trends and and see where they what kind of what google trends says about them 
as a I don't know what Google Trends actually shows more or less a Google search um, practice what people are doing so anyway <clears throat> I found those uh, interesting little spikes here, uh, down spikes, uh, similar on OpenSSL and curl over the last. Well, uh, there, there, they happen every year, right? So this is five years, so they happen every year at some point. But uh, yeah, apparently not as uh, obvious in the on WGAT. But still, curl still has m much more attention than the other two, and. Uh, not sure what it says at all, just something. We achieved 25,000 GitHub stars uh, in, on the curl project on GitHub this year. And again, that really doesn't say anything because that's, you know, uh, yeah, people have clicked the star. 25,000 people, users have clicked a star on the, it doesn't say anything, <clears throat> but fun. You know, I just uh, appreciate the number. So uh, we are um, still best practices and gold level. The This um, core infrastructure initiative best practices thing actually changed name this year. So it's actually now called OpenSSF best practices. And we remain one of the few projects that are gold rated. I think we're now up to 12 projects in total that have gold. It actually surprises me that we're not more p projects. And really, everyone uses curl, and this this and this is the same slide as last year. Lots of big volume, large volume apps, a lot of operating systems, pretty much all operating systems, pretty much all cars, pretty much all game consoles. Lots of big uh, big name games. And uh, as I mentioned already, the helicopter 2020, uh, the Mars 2020 helicopter project. So you know, I keep saying uh, 10 plus billion installations. I've said it for a few years now. Maybe I should update that number when I uh, boast about curl. But you know, estimating or guesstimating the number of um, installations, it's really difficult. And uh, I don't know. Money in the project. So we have uh, money and we have sponsors. So this is how it looks like, right? Um, curl is not a legal entity. There, there is no, there's no curl company. There's no curl, uh, you know, foundation or anything. So we have Open Collective to hold on to money that is for curl. And I work for Wolf SSL. Wolf SSL is an American company. We do my part i sell curl support to customer to paying customers and they then pay wolf ssl i get a pay from wolf ssl so that's that's my living there so this this is some of the fundamental cornerstones of, of the money uh, in in the project um or money around the project yes that's the logo for wolf ssl i work for wolf ssl <coughs> um and of course then um I do a lot of things that aren't um, customer related when I work in curl because I do curl full time, all time, uh, a lot of curl. And mo a lot of what I do is not related to customers, of course, but uh, I do just because uh, I want to improve curl. And Wolf of Zelda sponsors that job basically by allowing me to do that, that w even when it's not yeah, customer driven. Okay, so we have ma main sponsors in the project. Hacks is one of the original main sponsors. As I mentioned already, Fastly, TeamViewer, Pace, CI Services, Kire, these are done separate from WolfSSL really. And Kire uh, runs Pace DNS services for us. Good companies and they really help the project um, deliver better stuff. We have a gold sponsor, Elastic, and uh, they, they also s s stick out as a, in paying more money to the project, helping us more with our finances than any other. We have a lot of uh, silver sponsors and these are silver sponsors out of June. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I should have updated this. Some of these are not around anymore. Still, a silver sponsor pays 100 USD per month and they really help us with all of these expenses we have in the project. And as you can see, there are smaller companies, they're not 
no big ones well maybe a few of them are slightly bigger than others but a lot of small ones anyway so at in may 2026 this as is going may 2026 here's we're almost four months behind here now so we have a lot of money in the project one hundred and twenty three thousand dollars up forty thousand dollars since last um, curl up which was in in the spring of 2021 <clears throat> So really, we, we are not in a, uh, financial trouble in any way at all. And part this, I mean, there are several reasons why the funds have been uh, increasing. And, and the, I would say, first, we have more sponsors. We have less expensive because we haven't had any physical curl up that we would use a lot of these uh, funds for. Well, we, we tried to have, have one in June, right? That uh, I canceled them because I got sick we paid some funds uh, to that for, for those we actually sort of sent off without being able to attend anyway. And, and then we, we also got help with the bug bounties from the internet bug bounty. So we don't pay the bug bounties either. So we sort of that has uh, uh, made the funds sort of build up a little larger pile. So I'm, I'm still, uh, uh, curious and keen on, on learning how, how we should improve the project better with the money that we have so because now we have money we can actually spend it on things to to make things better and we now use expenses to do pay for curl sc hosting we started to do that i actually paid for the hosting for for the first 20 some something years but now i actually have started to charge the project for it to just you know make it a little bit better. But we want to want to keep uh, uh, pay for curl up travel and lodging so that we can have do nice, f fine curl up conferences in person, hopefully again next year and get people to actually attend. And I want to do more of stickers and, and, and merch and, and ship those to top contributors. We're not paying bug bounties anymore, but I'm still, as I said, I'm still interested in learning from you what you think we should use the money for i mean to improve the project for marketing for for fun for for anything that that makes curl and and uh, the world around curl a, a better place so what have we what happened in the project the last 12 months again June to June more more than June to September. So we did 20, 1,024 bug fixes. I mentioned already we had 29 changes and we fixed 18 CVEs. <clears throat> and we libcurl option wise, we added things like max lifetime connection. So you can set a max time for how long a connection is allowed to, I mean, how old it is allowed to be before you reuse it, or, or rather close it and use an, uh, create a new one. A, a new callback for getting told, um, the application gets told just before the request is issued. Support for uh, SHA-256 public keys, uh, keys in, in SSH. And we did things like adding a MSH3, I told you already about that, and we changed how we do uh, form field and file names in multi-part form posts. A bit of a subtle change, but we've aligned with now more with how browsers do it and have done it for a while. Added a new um, API call to get uh, a string version of uh, out of a url parser error we have now we no longer resolve the local host uh, hosting is fixed you always get the 127.001 or colon colon one back you actually get both uh, um, and now we then uh, thanks to that we also consider cookies over local hosts as secure so secure cookies now work on local host we dropped metalink support we dropped MesaLink support confusingly named confusingly similarly named projects metalink being a way to specify the same source of file from multiple places so that curl could get it from one or more places um, anyway we dropped it for security reasons we dropped metalink for also basically security reasons basically it stopped getting maintained and we have over the year increased the support for hyper Hyper being an HTTP library written in Rust that is 
the, our intention is to make make that a, an alternative HTTP implementation for curl so that you can build with hyper support is, and then replace uh, a good chunk of native uh, C lib curl code. In the command line tool area, we added things like no clobber so that you can ask the command line tool to not override a file if it actually exists on disk before when curl is about to create it so it doesn't override it. Um, and you can also make it remove the file that it downloaded in case it gets an error uh, while transferring it. Basically, don't leave leftover trash on disk when, when a failure occur. <clears throat> we have added support for this. You know, JSON, JSON is a very common format to work with when you do curl command lines. You send JSON parts or, or, and you receive JSON parts. This dash dash JSON is a new way to make it easier to send the JSON in, in HTTP posts to servers when you want to send JSON data. And we added a lot of new magic and output features to the dash dash write out option, which uh, is, has really become uh, you know, a whole universe of different things in its own. So we do now do, you can provide header that is output specific uh, contents from specific headers in write out. And, and then it can output any header, of course, in the previous from the previous response. Um, you can uh, output all headers in JSON format using this. And in test suite wise, we have added support for Unix socket support for the HTTP server. So you can actually verify uh, Unix domain sockets, uh, HTTP over Unix domain instead of over TCP. We have a lot of more testable features. Uh, and by that, I mean, you can restrict tests from uh, for running only under various conditions. If this is true, run this test. This, unless, unless this is uh, supported uh, or rather, you know, if this is not supported, don't run, the, don't even try to run the test because it will require this test, uh, this feature. Another things that happened in around the project, I became a GitHub star, blah, blah, blah. And, and for, for Curl's point of view, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it gives me some fun insights into what uh, uh, GitHub is doing. I can give them feedback. I can uh, try out things early that is coming in GitHub. And since we're using GitHub quite a lot, it's actually quite handy and practical. So I'm, I'm trying to take advantage of this um, to the biggest extent that I can and uh, make sure that we as a project benefit from my status as a GitHub store. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and when, right, uh, as I mentioned already earlier, we dropped Travis CI uh, because it's no longer free for us. It's now, you know, that free for open source forever, they said in their promise, it wasn't really free for open source forever uh, in the forever, forever meaning of the world, but suddenly an open source project couldn't have anyone that is getting paid to work in the open source project, which I am. So we didn't qualify anymore. And we would, I think the rate for what we were using on Travis CI was uh, slightly over 200 USD per month that we're now saving by not using Travis CI. So we moved to Zool and Circle CI. And I, as I mentioned also before, Zool did not turn out to be uh, the the happy partner we wanted it to be. So we're probably not going to use Zool much more either going forward. We're actually slowly transitioning away from Zool to other services. The, the primary one actually now being used after Travis, we used it already before, but now the, the, biggest, ser the biggest CI service we use now is GitHub and GitHub Actions, they call it. So yes. Turn, Zool turn bad in a different way, and and it is bad. It's actually bad in in um, in a few different ways. First, uh, we've had problems that it doesn't uh, always show up as a as a CI job on, on pull request, which is really bad. So it just you know drops off, and you can see it. I think they might have fixed that, but then they also don't show up as individual jobs in the in the total list. But you have to go to a separate page to view them. Uh, and so on. And uh, while we've had these problems, um, well, the first initial one, at least the, the primary one, that it actually just fell off the face of the our CI system, so we didn't see them for 
and and we and we issued uh, we really didn't have anyone to talk to nobody can fix it because we don't have the, the necessary contacts in the zool side so uh, we felt that there was not a good attention there so it felt like it's a very it's a very very not a very strong partner it's something very you know nothing to lean on here so we better move it on to other services instead where we think we have more stable service more more reliable and everything curl and again here is a really old data because i recently blogged when i when we reached 100,000 words so <coughs> it curl since then his last last curl up we actually then if we say the current number of 100,000 we actually then well increased by quite a lot of number of words in the book so if you go to everything curl now you should see that well not well everything about curl is in the book and the, um, it is explained with detail and sure i'm interested in feedback and if you find something that it's not mentioned we should go there and mention i've actually gradually sometimes decided to not do documentation in the project and pointed to the book instead because sometimes it feels uh, i mean it's we don't have to do d duplicate documentation of things everywhere so some sometimes it's good to just have it in a really good way in a single place so maybe the book is is becoming that single place for a lot of documentation uh, i don't want to i don't want the book to sort of ruin or conquer the project sort of take over the project in any way or or sort of make it a competition of where the documentation should be it's actually more I want it to be a complement or a complementary place, but still, everything curl is more of a tutorial. It's, it allows us to be more verbose, talk more, you know, blah blah blah, and then and the documentation on the curl on the curl site and, and in the curl project is more reference style. Maybe. So. Uh, anyway, it's it's um, and it's getting read quite a lot. We get a lot of traffic to the website. I think uh, people appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. What is less good in the project is stuff I've already touched. Basically, um, <clears throat> we have flaky test CI, and this again again this slide is copied i think verbatim from from last year it's pretty much the same thing we still have flaky test ci see and they're not really uh, and i would say the test cases are not the flaky ones it's the ci's and the test servers and s anyway some of the ci jobs are basically always well they are basically perma failing failing permanently so it's basically in every pr and, and commit the same CI job fails so it always turns up red which is really annoying because out of most PRs now most of them are actually you know turn up red because one of the tests fail fails um, how, highly annoying highly complicated to fix and, and work with but we we don't give up we we will keep uh, trying and get at it because it the CIs is really a helpful system and it would be really good to get back that when to a situation where we can assume that they will be green when things are good and red when things are bad. Right now they're always pretty much red so you have to check okay which ones are red. Oh they're, they're standard old flaky blah. <clears throat> Sometimes the CIs are slow. I don't think that's too much of a problem these days um, of course coming from from other projects you might think that they are very slow anyway because I, but if you allow them a few hours they're they are usually done so I don't think we need to get get them done faster I mean we should be able to allow all pull request a few hours anyway because you need some people to and get some time to watch it review it comment it anyway so you don't want to do it too fast until much anyway so it's not a it's not a big deal that it actually is a few hours i think that's good 
And when it comes to vulnerabilities, we still get them reported, but I'm not sure that is actually less good. I think it's actually good because reported vulnerabilities means that someone found an error and reported, reported it. So we actually improve. Not getting those reported means that we would keep having those problems around. And so I think they are actually good. We do still have regressions uh, and we could see that in the graph, you know, the release rate graph, when, how many days between releases. So yes, they still happen. Um, I, don't, I don't have any good ways to fix this other than keep adding test cases for things we add. But usually uh, we don't find those, you know, the, the whatever fell in the cracks between between test cases. We, that's that's one way to realize, oops, we didn't have a test case for this. So and then we add that test case. So we have fixed that for the next time. But, you know, in a project like curl, there are also uh, endless possibilities or for new mistakes. So we are doing our best. I think we're I think we are improving in general, but I don't I don't think we have any general medicine or fix or, or silver bullet to, to reduce or remove them completely. And of course, we could always use more people who stick around in the project for longer. I mean, which open source project wouldn't? <clears throat> I, this is again, I'm, I'm repeating things I've said other years. So I just want to emphasize curl and, and what my role, what I perceive and think of uh, what I think I do in, in this project. And I think I, a lot of what I do and a lot of my role in the project is to keep, I, I don't think we, there's a magic vision or I don't have any sort of, you know, uh, uh, mind reading uh, or, you know, I can't foresee the future in a particular more better way than anyone else. But I do have an idea what curl and libcurl should do and what they sort of in what realm they act and i help to make sure that they stick there stay there so and i do development and i fix problems for fun and for customers so this is pretty much i actually uh, i mean in an average day i spend most of that time fixing reviewing merging bug fixes merging or or working on uh, debugging other reported bug fix bugs that's that's i would say more than half of my work days <clears throat> so yes i try to then review code and suggestions so reviewing and merging prs is very important i believe that uh, widening our contribution contributor base and and making sure that everyone's contributions are treated good and uh, in time on time and and uh, is a good way to do that so i think that's important i also think it's very important to get a good architecture for new and, and things so that when we add things or we change things, we do them in a way that favors or, or sort of work in line with how curl should work or have, you know, make everything work the way they should, but the plumbing should be there and, and correct. And I work uh, fiercely on documenting everything in curl. And, and uh, no pun intended, but that's why the book is called Everything Curl. I'd really try to get everything done, documented, all tiny details within the project, about the project, about everything we do. And of course, I spend quite a lot of time informing, you know, p I post a ridiculous amount of blog posts that most of them are related to curl in one way or another, even if I try to not, you know, I don't speak for curl normally, I speak for myself when I blog about it, but still. I do try to talk about curl a lot uh, on my blog, on Twitter, and everywhere that uh, you know people want to listen. And I do a lot of public presentations and, and even private presentations talking about curl, open source, blah blah blah, how how we do things. Um, and of course, I think one of my one of my responsibilities in the project is to make sure that I. Um, I don't have to be the master of all the protocols, even if I, as a personal ambition, want to know all the protocols that we work with in curl so that I can know and understand how our code uh, speaks the protocols and how the protocols should be spoken. And, you know, 
all of that the interactions so over the wire and with servers and blah 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 and it's um, therefore i also try to read a lot of rfcs participate in some of the itf uh, working groups and so on to make sure that uh, our feedback goes to them their uh, ch changes in in specifications and and in new protocols and stuff get into curl as soon and as good as possible and of course i admin a lot of the website mailing list and random services that we run on our server um, that's because i i well the server the main server for curl is owned by hacks and i am a part owner of hacks so i sort of the physical machine that isn't anymore a physical machine because it's a virtual one but anyway i have access to that i fill with that i, I may make sure that it runs fine then nobody access that uh, site directly right because as i said before fastly hosted so everyone accesses the website through a cdn so yes i often serve as a sort of a public face for the project and i, I mean I founded a project that started it. I, I do a lot of development, but the project is not me. I'm not pr the project. I I work on and with curl. It's not mine project, my project. <coughs> so basically to p uh, simplify things, I, I once did this silly uh, sort of Venn diagram. That's me, the private me. That's curl, the project. That's Wolf SSL, the company. And while I'm involved in all of them, there's uh, there there are overlaps, but they're they're also separate. So I, as a person, I do things. Curl is a project that isn't mine; it's separate. Wolf SSL is a company that employs me, and we do curl services. Sort of, we offer curl support for, for commercial companies for commercial commercially. So it makes this uh, well mishmash of things. Usually, people don't have to care because it's, it'll work out fine in the end. So the uh, future, future, we are going to keep doing things even <coughs> in the future. Surprise, uh, sure. And and uh, as as we've been around for a long time, we're uh, I'm going to back, uh, we're celebrating 25 years very soon. People sometimes ask me about what I think about the future. You know, I've been there for a long time. How is everything going to go in the future? So I, I just, decided to include this little thing that I once wrote. So so my, my take on on, in, on networking curl future is like this. Things in, I mean, things, anything in, in our current society, if it's not power now, it will be soon, you know. Uh, everything gets a battery, uh, everything gets powered, you know. You, you get those coffee cups with a Bluetooth connection. You get toothbrushes with the uh, Bluetooth. You get uh, fridges with internet uh, displays. You have everything. Uh, uh, more and more things are getting powered. And as soon as they have power, you know, they have a battery, anything, someone will make it networked. And if it's not networked, someone will make a new model that is networked. And because that is you know, you can do more fancier things and, and you can do smart things, you know, the home is full of, you know, uh, networked light bulbs, whatever. And if it's powered, it'll be networked, right? So if it doesn't have power, it will be, get power. If it gets power, it will get networked. Uh, and if it gets networked, uh, someone will provide it internet access. Maybe not always directly, sometimes via some sort of hub or an app in a phone, but still it goes towards everything will be internet connected and have an internet access. And as soon as you get into that uh, area of if, if it has internet access, well, curl can help and probably will help. So there's, there's that. So basically there will be more curl as long as sort of this trend continues. And I think this is a trend we've seen the last five years. I don't see any end uh, of the line on this trend. This is going to be more of this going forward, I think. Curl version eight. As I said before, um, we uh, plan on doing curl eight on March 20, 2023. That is what? almost six months from now, half a year. Um, it's actually slightly more than a half a year. Uh, it doesn't matter. But anyway, that's the curl 25, 25th birthday. So it's just a fun 
thing to do on that exact date. And it's a way to uh, reduce the, um, the minor number in the curl project as we just recently re uh, released 7.85.0. We don't want to get that 85 down to a smaller number. So curl version 8.0.0 is planned to ship on March 20, 2023. We're not going to do any revolutionary changes or anything. It's just going to be, uh, you know, reset all the numbers and, and get down to something uh, more manageable. Maybe in the future bump the m uh, major number slightly more often than every 23 years. But we will see about that. We'll start with version 8 in 2023 and then we'll see how we, how we go from there. <coughs> so coming up. Feature-wise, going forward, I was planning on OSCP, OCSP. I can never get the, the order of the letters correct there, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating uh, from for several reasons. Because at first, I was going to get that funded from someone, but they uh, retracted that. So now I'm it's quite a big of a job to do without any f particular funding. So I, I think I'm going to hold out on that and there's also this privacy <laughs> angle to OCSP which is makes it not particularly attractive so I'm going I think I'm going to hold off I'm working on WebSockets right now I didn't back in in uh, in June when I wrote this slide but now it's almost there I'm going to land it very soon the first experimental version uh, for libcurl is going to be very interesting to see what kind of feedback I can get and we're going to work more with Hyper to make, you know, we're almost there. Well, I have a few more things to do before Hyper can, you know, get rid of the experimental tag and get really on par exactly feature to feature match with the native code. We're going to do more HTTP 3 in this year and going forward. There are details left. We, we don't do proper multiplexing. There are there there's, isn't any tests for HTTP 3 and so on. So there's there's more to do with that. And I think we're going to do it this year. I hope to. I'm going to work more on tiny curl, and, and with that I mean more more adjustments in curl to make sure that you can build a really small footprint version when you disable features. So basically, when you disable something, it should disable all the data, all the f things that you disable, so you don't get any leftovers. If you disable FTP, there shouldn't be any FTP traces left in the build, basically, a and possibly make more features enable disable so that a really small HTTP only version of curl can become tiny. That's in the name. Tiny is, of course, a relative term. What is tiny? But my goal here. My ambition is to provide a libcurl with a TLS library within 100k on a 32-bit architecture, I've said. So I use Wood for SSL when I do that and I think I'm in the ballpark generally with curl. I haven't measured it recently but I'm there and I want to make sure that we stay there and I want to possibly go even smaller. I, I've mentioned this before but there's a, there's a new HTTP method being proposed called query. It's it's supposed to be post-like, but um, so should we support it natively? Do we need anything to to support it, or maybe we don't? I don't know. There there's the the, the jury's still out. Maybe there are other things to do as well. So I have a personal sort of list of things I want to work on, but you know. I hope to do a lot of more work curl for hire. So, if if you are a company who uses who, who use curl um, somewhere in a commercial surrounding and you you're missing out something, let me know and we can work out to, uh, what we can do in curl to make you happier and and get those tiny things adjusted. It doesn't have to be me doing it because uh, when you hire someone to work on curl, it doesn't have to be me. But I would. Uh, of course like to be involved as well so talk talk to me what do you want to see you don't have i mean anyone can provide a pull request like i already mentioned a lot of people do so whatever you want to do in curl talk to us and and bring bring your people together roll up your sleeves uh, get a pull request going it's not that hard uh, and we're all friendly so that's the sometimes the best sort of way to help the project is to actually get developers involved and and do the bug fixes or do the features and, and, and submit them to the project. 
th that's we just love that so yes talk to us i'm background twitter we're on uh, the cur uh, curl it says free node irc but we're on libra chat free node is dead uh, file bug reports of course uh, submit bull <laughs> in not bull pull requests and if you have security problems you submit them on hacker one uh, and of course you use the mailing lists if you want to more discuss things, maybe, uh, you know, architectural visions, whatever. We're we're there on the mailing list, and I think maybe this is pretty much what I wanted to say in the state of curl in 2022. Yes, that is it, and I'm um, I'm a little bit over time, so I hope you bear with me. But thank you for listening, and um, as as I replay this on uh, well, when, when we if you watch this at curl app 2022 in person ask me questions about anything of this in the session following right now otherwise see you uh, in another episode <laughs>